Hi, I'm Dan the author. In Unit 9, you're going to take a look at architectural drawings. They are the core of any set of construction documents. You will learn to identify the types of drawings classified as architectural drawings. List different types of floor plans used in construction projects. Describe the purpose of elevations, sections, and details. Identify materials specified on architectural drawings. And interpret construction requirements specified on architectural drawings. As you learned in Unit 1, construction drawings are organized into categories and trade disciplines as they relate to the construction project. Architectural drawings show the materials and construction processes that define the structure and create the final space for the building. The architectural drawings represent the core of the drawing set and serve to pull the entire project together. Drawings in this classification are typically prefixed with the letter A, and typically one of the largest sections in the drawing documents. The organization consists of floor plans, architectural elevations, architectural sections, architectural details, and schedules. Here is an example of an index page for architectural drawing included in a set of plans. Note they start with the notes page. Then the materials list, demolition plans, floor plans, elevations, sections, details, interior elevations, and this project is for a school, so there are equipment plans and a reflected ceiling plan. The floor plans, showing the building layout, they are printed to scale, typically one quarter inch or eighth inch equals one foot zero inches. Imagine making a horizontal cut approximately four feet above the finished floor, then looking down. That is what you see in a floor plan. There is a separate drawing made for each floor. Typical floor plans would be overall plans showing the overall scope of the project, a demolition plan, enlarged plans showing more detail like bathroom or kitchen, reflected ceiling plans, floor finish plans, and equipment plans. Here is an example of a residential plan. Note it is also showing the electrical switches and fixtures layout on the plan, which can be done when plans are simple. Here is an example of a commercial floor plan. Note room names and numbers, section marks, door number, which relate to the room numbers and window type identifications. Also note the cloud lines identifying revisions to the project. An example of a demolition plan. Again, note the revision cloud and the triangular identification revision number. The revision number would also be referenced in the title block with the date of the revision. An example of a reflected ceiling plan. Note the legend with the fixtures and HVAC grills. An example of an enlarged plan showing a commercial building bathroom with all the fixtures with specialty items. Note the hexagon with numbers that refer to the legend describing all the bathroom items. And here is an enlarged stair floor plan going up through the building. Also note the hexagon note legend. This makes it much easier for the designer and the contractor to identify materials. The next few plans are from a high-rise building called Gateway Towers, showing each floor of the building starting at the lowest underground garage level named lower level. The plans are not in the book. If you want a set to review, go to my website and order them for a discounted price of $10. Use discount code capital GWT 50%. My website is www.printreading.us. Next is the first floor. Note some of the features of the site work are drawn to identify the first floor access. The second floor. The third floor to the seventh floor. Note here the architect has shown five floors using one plan 
because each floor is exactly the same. The danger with this is when estimating and ordering materials for the project, the contractor would need to estimate and take off from the one floor plan, then multiply it times five. The eighth and ninth floor. Note this is times two. The tenth floor. Note the enclosed part of the building steps in and creates an outdoor plaza area. The penthouse with another outdoor area. And the roof plan. Almost all buildings will have a plan of the roof showing slopes, drains, and parapet details. Elevations. Elevations show the vertical layout and surface of the building. Architects use elevations to communicate the beauty of the building as well as define construction materials like windows, brick, siding, louvers, and many other materials and details the architect needs to show. Elevations define vertical elevation marks, grading, and foundation lines along with sections and detail cuts. Typical one elevation drawing for each face of the building. Elevations are defined by the compass direction that the elevation is facing, like north, south, east, and west, as noted by the north arrow. Typical types of elevations would be exterior, interior, and detail elevations. Here is an example of a residential elevation. Note the roofing materials, louvers, shutters, stone, siding, and location of the light fixtures, along with a outline of the house foundation. Could you build the home from this elevation? No, but the elevation does help create the image of what the home will look like when completed and locates things like the louvers and the lights. Here is an example of a commercial office building elevation. Note here, along with the materials the elevation is showing, the grid column lines and the building floor elevations. Detail reference marks like we saw on other drawings are also being used here along with section cuts and enlarged elevation references. Elevations can also be used in the interior, like seen here in this elevation of a residential fireplace and restroom vanity. And here is an interior elevation of a retail building window wall. Building cross sections are a little like elevations, but extend all the way through the structures as seen here in this residential building, or here in this gymnasium. Details. Details show a smaller portion of the building to clarify the materials and type of construction. Details are made at a larger scale than floor plan drawings, elevations, and most sections. Typical scales for details would be three quarters of an inch equals one foot, up to three inches equals one foot, depending on how much detail needs to be shown. A wall section might be three quarters of an inch equals a foot, while the blow up of the parapet wall at the top would be one and a half inches equals one foot. Here is a simple section of a residential stair. Note the scale is three eighths inch equals one foot making a liar out of me, but not much detail is needed here. Here in this section, the architect is showing the entire building wall using a scale of three quarters of an inch equals a foot and a detailed blow up at the top using a scale of one and a half inches equals a foot, showing additional detail of the parapet wall and roof construction. Also note, this architect uses a notes system referenced to CSI specification numbers to a legend so that the contractor can easily look up material information. Details can also be used in plan views. 
as shown here at the intersection of the structural building column showing the stud framing and finished materials. Schedules. Schedules are one of the most useful tools in a set of construction documents. A schedule is a listing of information related to materials or products required in the project. Typical schedules on architectural drawings are door schedules, window schedules, room finish schedules, accessory or fixture schedules. Here is an example of a door and frame schedule and a room finish schedule. Note on commercial building, each room has a room name along with a room number to help find its location on the floor plans. In this door schedule, note the room names and numbers for each door in the room are identified as, for instance, 105A or 105B, and in the hard lines area, 112A, B, C, D for the four different kinds of doors. The same thing is true for room finish schedule. Note in the room finish schedule, the wall finishes are referenced by north, east, south, and west. Schedules are a great resource for information. Careers in architecture. Architects plan and design homes, office buildings, factories, and many other types of structures. An architect is a licensed professional who works with clients, engineers, and contractors throughout the construction project. A career in architecture offers many positive rewards. One of the most valuable benefits is the satisfaction of seeing the development of a design that becomes a reality when built. Pause here and review the material in Unit 9. Then answer the questions on page 161. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. Pause the video here and answer the questions in Activity 9-1 on pages 162 and 163 using the Sullivan Residential Plans. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. Pause the video here and answer the questions in Activity 9-2 on pages 164 to 166 using the Delhi Garden Center drawings. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. Pause the video here and answer the questions in Activity 9-3 on pages 167 and 168. Continue using the Delhi Garden Center drawings. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. This completes Unit 9.